Hello guys and welcome back to another video and today we've got a video on 10 electric cars that I actually like. Yes. It was quite a struggle to get 10, that's all I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about them, see why, well, explain why I like them and this and the other and yeah, see what you guys think of the choices. So we're going to go in order from the least liked to the most. Um, now, all of these are cars that I genuinely, well, to be honest, some of them I only put on there because of the struggle to find other cars. Um, I do like them per se, but I think only the top four I would buy. So, quite confusing. Um, or the top five or something. There's not many that I'd actually buy um, on this list. Thanks if you would like to see a video on every single car in the world that's ever been created that I would buy, you can click on the pop out banner up there to see that video. Um, it is quite a lengthy one, uh, but I'm quite interesting. Uh, so why wouldn't I buy many electric cars then? Well, electric cars are boring and are terrible driver's cars, but also incredibly um, impractical in the real world because they can't go very far, they take too long to charge, they also are just genuinely worse cars in general and they are also in the long term can be worse for the environment than a traditional petrol or diesel car. Now you may go, oh you mean we you might put the adenoids on. No, uh, there is scientific evidence, just google it. Um, it has been proven many times, so yeah, don't really like them, but there are a few on there. Now there is a wild card, now the reason I didn't put this on was because it's not actually a production car. Uh, for me, the best example of another decent, cool electric car is the Opel, the, I think the Opel Manta GSE Electro Mod, whatever it's called, um, because that has a four speed manual gearbox and, and an electric car, like, and it looks pretty decent and yeah so that's my wild card um, but unfortunately it isn't in production if it was probably in the top five but it's not so I haven't actually put it in the list um, there are cars on there on here that are no longer in production but they were actual cars that were sold the electro mod is a one-off so I haven't put it in um, but for me, that's where we should be going down the route of. If we're going to electric cars, you need to get manual gearboxes in them because otherwise they're just being boring old swines and they're annoying. Anyway, let's get to the first car then. What is it? It is the Audi Etron S Quattro. Yes, you do pronounce it Etron. Um, so, yeah, deal with it. Uh, it is the big SUV. Now, I don't genuinely, genuinely don't like SUVs. Uh, you can see a video where I explain ones I do like. And this is one of them um, because I think I don't I don't mind the way they look um, and they're very decent interiors. I like the way the interior is laid out and they are pretty fast. Now the Etron X produces 496 brake horsepower from its electric motors, four wheel drives at 60 in about four and a half seconds. So it's unnecessarily fast. Its range isn't brilliant though for the sort of car that it is, but it is around 250 I think mileage. So. Um, it's not too, it's not like unbelievably bad, uh, but it's genuinely not a terrible car at all. I do sort of, I do quite like it. It's, it's all right. Um, number nine is also an Audi. It is the Audi Etron GT RS Quattro. Um, so the Etron GT is the sporty saloon car that's based on the Porsche Taycan, um, which is not on this list. And I'll explain why in a second. Um, the reason the Audi is and the Porsche isn't is because of the simple fact that if you look at a Porsche Taycan, it is nowhere near as decent to look at than the Audi. The Audi is a far better looking car. Also, the Audi is a hell of a lot cheaper. And the fact that the Audi is pretty much fully specced when you buy it, whereas the Porsche is more expensive and has less kit. And then you have to spend more money on getting it to the same kit that the Audi's got when you could just buy the Audi, which isn't much slower, slightly better looking, has around the same range and comes with everything pretty much. 
Um, the Audi is the both. It is expensive. The both expensive. But the RS produces four hundred, not four hundred. That doesn't even have four hundred. That's without its overboost in standard form. Anyway, has six hundred and thirty-seven brake horsepower. Um, zero to sixty in three point three seconds for the RS version, and a top speed of one hundred and fifty-five miles per hour. So it's not slow. It is sort of similar, sort of performance-wise to the. Um, Taycan Turbo, the Turbo S, in all fairness, which doesn't look too bad uh, as a car. The Taycan isn't a bad looking car, it's just not as nice as the Audi, um, I don't think anyway. Um, and I don't see, I don't see the price as being justified, considering it's just not worth the extra money. But um, Taycan Turbo S is a lot faster, um, the Taycan Turbo isn't much faster than the RS, um, but the RS is sort of priced at a decent spec um, 4S uh, Taycan, which is the one with 563 horsepower. The basic version of the Audi Etron, um, which is the slowest one, is around the same price as the as a highly spec Taycan 4, or no, not Taycan 4, they don't even do what the rear wheel drive Taycan, or a lower spec Taycan 4S, and there's not much um, difference in performance between the lot. So. Quite an interesting um, sort of car, especially for Audi, saloon car as well, they do saloon cars very well, um, but I don't see the justification on the Taycan, so that's why I would have one of those over a Taycan. I still wouldn't buy the Audi Etron GT though, because I'd rather have, for that money, a much older, much better, much more fun, better sounding, better looking car, because old cars are just genuinely better anyway, and if it's an older car it will have a manual gearbox and be more fun, so end of story. Um, yeah, let's move on to number eight, which is the Rimac Nevera. Now, there's not many modern supercars or hypercars that I like. In fact, the Nevera is one that I'd, is a car I genuinely wouldn't buy because it's too expensive. Um, and I don't really like hypercars or supercars at all because I just think they're unnecessary, most of them. And this is an example of one, but this does unnecessary rather well. So normally what you have is you have an unnecessary where it's just basically pointless and stupid and don't really need it and the world's better without it. This is unnecessary in the fact that it's ridiculous and it's cool because it's ridiculous. This car is unbelievably fast. It's four electric motors combined to 1,888 brake horsepower. Top speed, 258 miles an hour, which is ridiculous. One of the fastest road legal cars currently on sale. 0 to 60 in 1.85 seconds, which means it is also one of the fastest accelerating road legal cars on sale, and I think has set a couple of quarter mile records already. Um, it is unbelievably fast, and that's why I sort of like it in a weird way. I also think it looks quite good, um, especially in a dark blue. Dark blue looks really nice. Um, it's just the fact that it's it takes speed to the next level in terms of acceleration. I don't like cars that are fast because they're not really needed in the real world. But because the Rimac is so fast, it makes it a little bit more interesting than something that's in the middle of being quick and unbelievably fast. So something that's just a regular supercar nowadays is boring, but something that's above that and above the hypercar level of like 1500 horsepower, something that's on so fast it just shouldn't exist, like the Rimac, is interesting. And something that's slower is much more interesting than something that's just in the middle of power power range because it's just boring and it's like that everywhere. So, whereas the Rimac actually stands out because there's not many cars of that performance anymore. So, well, on sale at all, really. Uh, there is one further up the list that is a little bit, it, in fact, it is more powerful and faster. Um, not a top end, but it's over 60. So, um, that will come very soon. Now, I think I'm going to try and remember what the next one is. Uh, it's it, We're going into the sort of cheaper cars now. There is one that is more expensive coming up, which is the rival to the Rimac. But it is, we're sort of getting to the realm of I would actually buy these cars now because the ones that we've already mentioned I wouldn't actually purchase. They're just cars that I sort of like that are powered by electricity. There's probably four or five that I'd ever consider actually buying with money because I don't like electric cars at all. Um, so we'll, we'll get onto those. And the number one spot 
would be the one that I would actually purchase. I'm thinking number two and number three as well. Maybe four and five actually as well. Um, but I don't think seven and six I'd buy. So um, we'll get onto those now. So then number seven is quite a quirky little car. I do like this actually. Uh, it's the BMW i3 S. Now it is the S. Uh, the i3 is quite a quirky electric hatchback from BMW. It's been out quite a while now. They have updated it in the recent years with a bigger battery and better mileage, uh, better range. Um, and the S is pretty quick. A Zoom 60 takes 6.9 seconds for the i3 S, which is pretty fast for a small electric hatchback. 181 horsepower, top speed of just 99, but obviously electric cars are a lot slower top end because of their single or twin gears. They don't really have like a proper proper normal gearbox, which is the big issue. Um, but I think they might solve that, hopefully, um, and make cars a bit more interesting that are powered by electricity by adding more gears. Um, it is possible, especially with manual gearboxes, um, which they can insert because Opel did it with the Mansa. But anyway, away from the point. The i3s is quite quirky, I like, this is where uh, the electric car thing I like. I like an electric car that's quirky and cool. I don't, in fact, most cars I like are quirky and quite cool. I don't like things that are just bland and like every other car. Like, for example, the Audi Etron S and the Audi Etron GT are just like every other electric car. In fact, the Rimac is just like every other electric, electric supercar, really, um, which I don't really like extent that I would buy it. I mean, I don't mind them. I genuinely don't mind them. I think they're quite nice cars, but I wouldn't buy them. The i3s is one that I wouldn't mind considering as long as the price wasn't too bad because they are quite expensive being BMWs, but they're very decent little cars. I actually don't mind them. I think I'd have a, um, a red one with black accent. So it's basically like two tones. So you get the red and the black, which you'll see on your screen. Um, very nice little cars. I think they do around 200 miles to 200 to 250 miles. They did do a range extender actually of this very car, um, which I think was quite interesting. Range extenders, I think, are the the gem of the electric car world that unfortunately hasn't taken off. And there are two range extenders on this list further up. So, um, yeah, it. Well, I do not know why the technology doesn't take off because it's so genius. It's brilliant. It solves all the electric car problems. I don't know why they haven't pursued it, but. Anyway, um, yeah, the i3 is quite a quirky car, I like it, um, decent looking thing, uh, I know why people might not like it, but then I like Marmite, unique cars, so, um, yeah, it's quite a nice little thing, uh, definitely, definitely a lot cooler than the standard hatchbacks. Um, next one is the Aspark Owl, uh, the Aspark Owl is, well, I can't turn its cockpit fully 360 um, or 180 or whatever, it can't turn its head around. Um, it's not a proper owl, it's a car, not an owl. Um, but never mind, uh, away from the owl jokes, because that was quite terrible. Um, it's basically the Rimax enemy. The Lotus Avia isn't really, because it's not built to be as ridiculously fast. Even though it's got more power, it's not built and geared to be as ridiculously as fast top end or acceleration as the Rimac. The Aspark is. The Aspark Owl has 1,985 brake horsepower or 2,012 metric horsepower, which is PS or HP. There is a difference. I have done a video on this. You can click on the pop-up banner to have a look. Uh, now, basically, metric horsepower is what most car manufacturers measure in. Um, now, I know it's BHP because it's more of an English thing, but... In a nutshell, the Aspark Owl is the most powerful production car you can currently buy. The Lotus Avia, which was claimed to be, um, isn't anymore because the Aspark is, has now been confirmed to have 1,985. Uh, it wasn't at the time of the Avia release. The Avia has 2,000 metric horsepower, or 1,972 bhp. The Rimac has 1,914 metric horsepower, or 1,888 bhp. I will put that on the screen right now uh, so that you can see there is a difference. And if you didn't know, the Pininfarina Batista, the other electric sort of supercar, has 1,900 metric horsepower, which is 1,876 brake horsepower. I do just know this thing. I'm, I'm, I do just know these things. That's just me being a nerd. But uh, yeah, the Aspark is flipping first. Um, 
360, 1.69 seconds. It has been tested as well. Um, I do think that same with the rim at that was with the one foot roll out the American style one, which isn't zero to sixty. It's like six to sixty, um, which I think is a bit of a cheaty way. Like the play Tesla does one point nine nine from a one foot roll. Like we struggle to get two and a half from it from standing, so it's ridiculous really. Uh, but it does mean that it is the fastest road legal car from zero to sixty miles an hour. Um, which I think is unbelievably ballistic. Now, its top speed is a little bit down on the Rimac. Uh, I think that's because the Rimac's got a larger like, um, second gear. Um, I don't know whether the Aspark actually has two gears. Probably only has one, but who knows? Electric cars are complicated and stupid. Um, it does 248 miles an hour, though, so it's not slow by any means. It's unbelievably fast still, so it doesn't really matter. And it is still one of the fastest cars on sale, because not many cars are that fast anymore. Um, it, we're not in the 1990s anymore, so yeah, cars were first back then, uh, cars are no longer first. They just accelerate fairly okay to like 100 miles an hour and then just die, which is just the modern world of cars, it's boring. Um, but anyway, the Asperg is unbelievably first, and yeah, it's hilarious. Stuff. But I also think it's a very good looking car compared to the Rimac. The Rimac isn't as good looking as the Asperg, and the Asperg is for me, stands out a bit more than the Rimac because less people have heard of it, and that's why. Um, that's why it makes it a bit cooler as well. Um, so yeah, we're into the top five now. It's getting interesting. The next car is the Toyota Mirai, but the brand new one from 2021, which is an absolutely gorgeous saloon car. Did that light flash though? It is flipping amazing how good it looks compared to the old one especially but it is this it is a hydrogen fuel cell car which is another type of electric vehicle that i think we should pursue more of because it's genius and much better than electricity in general um it's not first it's a 60 in like nine seconds or so but that's not slow either that's reasonably quick 178 horsepower or something around that figure 109 miles an hour top speed um which is because of the gearing obviously uh, but it's a big executive luxury saloon car. It looks good. The interior is nice. It's quiet, laid back, luxurious, how it should be for a big executive saloon car. But you don't worry about the range because when you get to a filling station, it takes three minutes to fill up like a normal petrol car instead of like nine hours. So it's it's genius, really. But yeah, fabulous little car. I love the way they look. Um, and... Yes, I have also done a review on the way I think of this, how I like this car. Also, you can see that in this very place, the educational content playlist. Or you can just click on the pop-up banner somewhere and there will be a link to that video as well. If you want to see the Total Mirai review where I think of it, how good how good it looks as well. Um, but yeah, very good looking car and I definitely would own one. Um, yeah, number four now, which might be... Quite an interesting one. I think you might like this one. The next one is the first of the range extenders on the list, and it is a taxi as well, also known as the LEVC TX. Why do I, I like this? Because it's quite cute. It's a nice small taxi. It's basically the modern London taxi, but it's quite cool. It's quirky, looks pretty decent, and I just I just have got a soft spot for them. I think they're so full of character. But obviously it's a range extender, so it uses a tiny little uh, three-cylinder engine, which hardly gives out any carbon emissions at all. In fact, little, um, I think about round, it is literally dead close to zero figure, which just charges the batteries up when the batteries go flat, which produces 148 horsepower. It is not first, it does sort of speed about 18, 0 to 60, about 13 seconds or so, but um, charges the batteries up. So you've got a bigger um, range than what you would have. You've just got a full tank of fuel as your extra range. As well so yeah really nice little thing it's just for doing short journeys but you can actually spec them what i like about levc is you can spec it to not be a taxi as well you can just walk in and go right i want a bright yellow levc tx but i don't want the taxi version i just want a civilian one and they do actually do them i think as well and they do them for other people around the world and it's just brilliant I've, I've watched tv programs on the actual building of the levc tx and it's a really really quirky little car and I genuinely like them a lot, so yeah, there's no stopping me liking it. Um, 
Next is another range extender, and this one, this is where we're getting to the top three now, and this is where it's interesting. It is the absolutely fabulous looking Fisker Karma. The unfortunate sales disaster that is better, for me at least, than the Tesla that didn't come much long after it. Um, basically, Fisker tried to pioneer the electric car before, well, big saloon executive electric car you know, before Tesla did with the Model S. Uh, in fact, the Model S came out not long after the Fisker went out of production in the UK. Um, the Fisker was basically just a big luxury executive electric car like the Tesla, except it was far better looking in every single way and slightly better to drive. It's a bit more sporty. Um, but instead it used the range extended technology had a small, uh, I think it was about four cylinders, maybe two litres, something like that engine under the bonnet at the front, which charged up the batteries for a bigger combined range than the Tesla when it came out, the Model S, the, just the standard version. Um, the interior wasn't as up to date as it was in Tesla. Tesla was, was quite revolutionary, really, considering what it was at the time. And when it, I think it might be like 2011, the Model S or something, or 2012. It's quite an old car. It's getting on a bit now, the original. Um, but the Fisker came out in about 08 or 09 or something in the UK. Um, it might have come out a bit later than that, actually. Uh, it didn't do very well, um, unfortunately. Didn't sell many. But by God, it looks good. The bloke who designed the Fisker car also designed one of BMW's greatest looking cars I've ever built. The BMW Z8. Absolutely beautiful convertible sports car from BMW from the 90s. Um, and you can see where the similarities do crossover. I won't be posting pictures of the Z8 in, or do I? No, I don't. But obviously that I will be posting pictures of the Fisker Karma. Uh, because, oh, stop it, I'll show me the Z8 for you. There you go. Um, yeah. What an absolutely fabulous design on the Fisker. And yeah, I don't want because they're rare, they look good, they're unique among electric cars. And they're a lot better to drive than the Tesla's because the more sport they have a more sporty feel to them. Yes, they're not as fast. I mean, it took Zero to sixty was five point nine seconds with four hundred and three brake horsepower. Each battery had two hundred and one point five bhp, so that combined to four hundred and three, and the sort of speed was one hundred twenty five miles an hour. So they weren't slow. They're not slow cars. They do shift when they're in their sportier modes. Um, properly nippy cars, just obviously not as unbelievable as the Model S when it came out, but then again, the Model S is a boring old fart. Who cares about Teslas? The rubbish. The Fisker was cool, and I can't wait for Fisker to come back into the electric car market, because they will do things that are different, and that's what makes electric cars that are decent stand out. And that's where the next two come in. So the next one, number two, we're getting into electric cars I would actually purchase now. I would own a Fisker Karma and I would own an LED GTX as well, by the way. And I would probably own an Aspar car. I think it's, they're all on the list. The LEVC might not be, but they're all on the list of cars I would own, which is in the pop-up banner, as you've already seen. Um, this is the Mazda MX-30. Yeah, what a cool car this is. Quirky, because it's got the suicide doors, which come from the old RX-8. But it's a tiny little crossover that's actually really good fun to drive for an electric car. It's, yeah, the range is terrible and all that, but I'd rather that than flipping a 400 mile range car that's actually really boring. Uh, so it's not first, but dead quirky. And is going to be fitted with, drum roll, a rotary! Yep, they are sticking a rotary engine in the front of an MX-30 as a range extender. The Dorito Power is returning, Dorito Power is returning, oh yes, but as range extender, which I think is a genius idea, because then you've got the Suicide Doors and the RX-8, you've got the quirky looks, you've got the fabulous drive, but then you've got the improved range from a rotary engine. Mazda, you are flipping fabulous. What the hell? And anyway, on to the last one. Number one, the only, probably the only electric car that I would actually go out right now and buy, the Honda E. What a cute and adorable little car this is. It's so adorable, I love it. It's, got, it's just, oh, it's so retro and adorable, I love it. Oh my God, it's crazy cute, I love it. Um, 
And the interior, I do not like screen laden interiors. I do not like them because I think they're stupid and they're just annoying. But the way Honda does it is in such a way that I actually like it. Because it's just so over the top and so ridiculous that it's interesting. The door mirrors, the screens, there's a massive panel of screens, you've got the wooden dashboard effect. It's just it's such a nice interior. It's too small. It range is absolutely pathetic, but it's not as bad as the Mazda, by the way. And it's unbelievably expensive, but it's so good fun to drive compared to the normal electric cars or something, or similar ones of similar size and price. It's dead quirky and it is what electric cars should be. They should stand out from normal petrol cars, which not enough of them do. The fact that this is so quirky, so different to any petrol car of its size and type and price range is what makes it stand out and that's why I like it. And that is 10 electric cars that I would actually, that I actually like. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video and yeah, just me having a rant really, but also trying to be entertaining enough for you guys to actually subscribe to the channel. There's a lot coming very soon. Um, I do hope you enjoyed, so if you did, leave a comment, make sure I want to see your thoughts, what electric cars would you own if you had the choice. Um, try and get 10 if you can, like I did. Um, trust me, it was very difficult um, until the point where I got 9 and was trying to find another one, um, but it was quite difficult. Uh, but yeah. Try and name 10 that you would own and comment them below. Obviously subscribe as well, put the notification bell on to be alerted when I make a new upload. And until next time guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon.